Alright, here we are. So V53 just arrived for the Meta Quest Pro and Meta Quest 2 on the PTC, so public test channel with some features that I can't believe weren't there already at release. Hey Tai here, so welcome to the VRTech channel. So let's discover this new update together in this video without wasting any time. So well, let's get into it. Alright, to start, I wanted to make you aware again that we're talking about the PTC, so public test channel. It's open to everyone, but be aware that we're talking about a beta version, so there might be some problems. And in this update, I actually found some already. So if you want to update and be one of the first people to actually try these new features, well, take it at your own risk, of course. To update a quest directly, you have to go to the MetaQuest app, devices, device settings, and then in advanced settings, actually toggle the PTC, so public test channel. Also similar thing for PC VR, where you have to go on the Oculus software, go in settings, beta, and toggle there the PTC. Again, public test channel. And here you have it, when you're gonna update, you're gonna be greeted already with a new dashboard completely. I think this is a fifth or seventh redesign. By the way, this is V53 and the last video was v51 so i'm just noticing right now where did the v52 go because i never received it i actually jumped from v51 for v53 did you guys see it around or something anyway going back this update brings very big features starting with a new dashboard design so as you can see now everything feels like a tablet where the dashboard is actually connected with the all the things that are gonna happen on top is like if you have a big iPad in front of you and they actually change also where to close or minimize an application. Now it's gonna be on the top left, like on the Mac, instead of being on the bottom right, like it was before in the other dashboard revisions. To be honest, I find it a bit an unfortunate spot to be at because many times you actually press on the X button instead of going back in the application, like in the settings, it's something that can happen. If it was made to improve usability, well, I think that actually creates more confusion than anything else. Also, it's pretty noticeable that there are some inconsistency where the bottom of the dashboard doesn't get any wider when the content above it is actually wider, so it looks kind of odd. Uh, let me know what you think about it. But I digress, using direct touch that we got in V51, actually works like a charm. It's very, very nice to use. Everything is there in a compact form factor. Well, they make it very usable. It just said to me that we're going towards a tablet in our VR experiences instead of a minority report that will fit much better the metaverse, I'll say. And one more thing, this feature is pretty cool. You can actually now pin an app to the dashboard. So if you always use the app, well, you can have it right there ready to tap on it. But anyway, going through the settings, we can see the new options available, mostly for the Meta Quest Pro this time, where if we go in experimental features, the display brightness compensation now actually works before it wasn't doing anything. And that's balanced the brightness between the center and the edges of the display for more even appearance, because using the pancake lens as well, the edges gets a bit darker than the rest. That's the only downside. The downside of Enabling this though is that the entire screen gets a bit darker, let's say. Nothing crazy, but uh, you might notice it. But drums roll, this is huge because local dimming can be now enabled system-wide and then Meta Quest Pro. If you don't know local dimming, well, the Quest Pro has a particular display with different zones. So you can actually turn on and off zones of the displays, like a thousand of dimming zones. Uh, so the results, as we saw uh, in some true lenses in the last video, uh, well, it's very, very, very good. It's not an OLED, but it gets them close. In fact, some games like Light Brigades or Ghost of the Boar actually enabled it already, uh, but it was just weird because developers had to enable it by themselves instead of have a system-wide thing. And well, while we don't have a toggle yet to have a system-wide thing, we can now actually use an ADB command to enable it system-wide an entire Oculus Quest Pro. You can use ADB or even better use SideQuest going on the top right and run in the ADB command and uh, then copy and paste the one that I'm gonna put down in the description below. Now you just have to turn off and on again the screen on the Quest Pro, just pressing on the power button once and power button again. And here I have a local dimming on the entire Oculus system. And I have to say that it looks much 
much better already. I just hope they're gonna put a toggle very soon because if this is the first step, then I'm sure it's gonna arrive as an experimental feature. If you are on a Quest 2 though, don't worry because there's a way to make your view much contrasty in a much better way and not many people know about it. So I, I thought it was the right time to actually feature it. If you go in the accessibility options and then in vision, you're gonna be able to change the contrast. Now, don't go too far on the right because then you're gonna make things look much, much worse, but just two or three steps on the right makes the image tons better, making everything more vivid. So give it a try and let me know if it improves things. But another new thing that you're gonna find in accessibility options, this time in mobility, is the laying down mode. This feature is designed to be used while in a laying down position. Ensure that you are in a, your desired position before reorienting the VR environment using this feature. So yeah, with this, you can play pretty much everything while laying down on the bed without any problem. Actually, there is a problem because there's a bug. Uh, if you enable this, then you can't disable it anymore until you actually reboot the device. So just be aware because in this mode, you're gonna be able to flip the floor uh, of your virtual environment. So if it's not perfectly leveled, you're gonna get sick pretty, pretty fast. It's a great feature if you wanna lay down and uh, watch a movie, just staying still, but if you're moving around and the floor is not leveled, be ready to puke. And then anyway, the last thing that is not really part of the Oculus update, but well, it's now possible thanks to this update, is the fact that VRChat enabled native eye tracking support. So that means that your avatar now could actually move their eyes and everything will feel much better, more interactive, more personal, more social than it was before. So if you have a Quest Pro using VR chat natively on the Quest Pro, well, that will be a great news for you. So yeah, here we have it guys. This was update V53, at least for the things that they noticed and the community noticed right now. We're still waiting for a complete changelog, but I'm also really curious to know where V52 actually went. To be honest, if you have a Quest Pro, maybe it makes sense to try the PTC so you can try the new dimming zone system-wide that is absolutely fantastic instead of if you have a Quest 2, unless you want really to lay down and uh, play like some games, well, I guess it's okay to wait for the actual release because some bugs are still present, unfortunately. But here you have it, this was V53. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, yeah, if you liked it, leave a thumbs up. And uh, as always guys, um, I as already said it, but if you like, leave a like. If you didn't like, dislike. Subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you love the channel, there's a join button down there. A little further, also the Patreon. With thanks to all the patrons who joined the channel, of course. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.